good morning students today we are not going for many introductions because this is continuation for diploma of pharmacy students for exit examination to be conducted in october 2024 by pharmacy council of india so we will go today's classes in biochemistry so we will see some questions so new new subjects and then again we will repeat coming with different questions in each subjects my aim is in each subject at least minimum 500 questions i can upload by explaining to the students so this is for diploma in pharmacy exit exam not only for that even this can be utilized it can be used it can be beneficially you can applied for various other exams even for any public service commission exam for pharmacist so biochemistry we have taken today for our um, class please subscribe my channel pick pharma dxp at dx prasad so the 10 mcqs or 15 mcqs which we are going to see in this session so we will start with the first question is insulin is in dash nature so insulin insulin means immediately you know very well in biochemistry we know that it is an enzyme a protein is endocrine secretion from myelids of langerhans which control blood sugar level and also insulin plays a major role for various metabolism carbohydrate metabolism it's needed so insulin is a protein sorry i told it's an enzyme no it's a protein you can say it's a protein is endocrine secretion from islets of langerhans so insulin is a protein chain or peptide hormone peptide we know peptide linkage between amino acids will make proteins amino acids are building blocks of proteins so or peptide hormone it contain 51 amino acid in an insulin molecule so insulin injection which is very common which we know nowadays even in our home at least a person will be having insulin dependent for type 1 or type 2 a diabetic diabetic patients are becoming very common so we know insulin here the question they have asked insulin is in dash nature is it lipid nature it's a protein in nature it's it's insulin is in protein nature none of the above is not the answer so very simple question so you should know that it is made up of amino acid 51 amino acid and insulin is an hormone which is secreted by islets of langerhans which can control metabolism of initiate metabolism of carbohydrates and it controls the blood glucose level in our body so these all things some of the information i am giving in that first question second question the best source of protein is immediately we will say egg but there are others egg is on an excellent source of protein with a single large egg you can acquire or it can contain 6 grams of protein actually so it's very good for taking every day a egg and vegetables if you see green leafy vegetables are best dietary source for vitamin k as phylloquinone you know vitamin k that is vegetables and we can say wheat is also wheat is rich source for carbohydrates proteins and fibers and it contain essential vitamins also and minerals such as vitamin b complex iron and zinc and it, and next one we can have an cheese 
which is we are commonly using in the bread is a great source for protein contain calcium but is often high in saturated fat and salt saturated fat and salt will be contained in cheese so the choice which they have given is which is the best source the word underlined best source so almost all of them except the vegetables leafy vegetables we can see all of them they contain protein so egg green leafy vegetables they are given a choice wheat they are choice and cheese also they have given a choice but the best source for protein which one big egg contains 6 grams of protein so which we can select that is egg is the answer for the second question third globulin is a type of they are asking so you should know what is globulin globulin is a helical structure of the protein a structure of globulin that I have shown in the picture globulins are a group of protein in your blood in our blood they are made in your liver they are manufactured in our liver and by your immune system and the globulin are a family of globular protein they have high molecular weights than albumin so globulin albulin albumin both are we are comparing for our knowledge and are insoluble in pure water but dissolved in dilute salt solution but dissolved in dilute salt solutions similar to albumin this globulin is similar to albumin globulin are simple protein it is a simple protein you know very well you might have studied conjugated protein derived protein simple protein so this is a simple protein as they yield only amino acid and some carbohydrates upon hydrolysis so hydrolysis if it is releasing or if it is giving a product only amino acid and some carbohydrate then it is a simple protein thereby fitting the def definition as a simple protein so we should know what is conjugated protein you might have studied but I am just revising the basic a conjugate protein is a protein that functions in interaction with other non polypeptide chemical groups attached by covalent bonding or weak interactions usually proteins are made up of only amino acid and peptide linkage but when you talk about conjugated proteins other than proteins if you are non polypeptide linkages covalent bonding or a weak interactions will be there that is conjugated protein derived proteins these are proteins derived from simple or conjugated proteins by physical or chemical means example are denatured proteins and peptides so denatured denatured proteins and peptides also an example from derived proteins so peptones if you say peptones are also they are soluble protein they are protein product they are soluble protein formed in early stage of protein breakdown during digestion so there is a products of protein peptones so you can see the choice now you had an idea about globulin and it's an another example which is similar albumin and we can know that some of the details what type of protein it is and it is even we have studied we have discussed about globulin is a group of protein which is in our blood and it is made in the liver and by our immune system so the questions can be different by this this is a very simple question they can ask in different manner so you can answer one who is listening to this question which is discussion so globulin is a type of is it a conjugated protein yeah, the student can say now no is it a derived protein no is it a peptones no and it is a simple protein 
So the answer is very simple. It is a simple protein, globulin, albumin. You can say they are simple proteins. So conjugated proteins means what? Derived proteins means what? And the peptones means what? We have discussed. So they can ask many type of question from this one question. So you should know this. Number four, the increased level of amylase indicates in our body because we are studying about biochemistry. So the questions may be directly asked to the pharmacist in this manner. The increased level of amylase indicates what it indicates. So you should know amylase is an enzyme or special protein. Enzyme or a special protein that helps you digest or helps in digesting carbohydrates. Most of the amylase in your body is made by pancreas and salivary glands. So the level of amylase having some revelation with pancreatic gland, islets of Langerhans, pancreas and the salivary gland. This is the structure of amylase. Elevation in serum amylase. If suppose the amylase elevated, the level is increased with no increase in serum lipase concentration or apparent pancreatic disorder can be used in diagnosis of salivary gland inflammation or acute stress. So salivary gland inflammation is an indication or a symptoms which can be seen while increase in amylase in our blood. An inflammation of gallbladder can also be seen. Cholecystitis. Even you should know what is in inflammation of gallbladder. Cholecystitis may cause increased amylase level causing hyperamylasemia and high levels of amylase in blood or urine may be a symptoms or a sign of acute sudden pancreatitis pancreatitis acute pancreatitis is due to this elevation or high levels of amylase in blood a blockage in a duct a small tube in the pancreas and pancreas cancer and being not a cancer meaning of tumor can also be seen even cancer can also be seen so we had an idea so increased level of amylase indicates pancreatitis we have seen yes possibility inflammation of salivary gland yes it will also will be seen inflammation of gallbladder yes it will also will be seen so the answer is all of the above so we should know what is amylase and where it is present if it is elevated elevated in the blood levels then what all the indications what all the possible symptoms and what are the cause of the disease can be known by this amylase level when it increases in our blood. Number five, the secondary structure of protein exists in the form. Proteins having many structures, simple structure, helical structure, and we have many forms of protein structure we might have studied. So you have seen secondary structure. When you come to the secondary structure or not tertiary structure I am talking about or the primary structure, we are talking about the secondary structure with a 2D structure. So in that beta sheet three stand structure and alpha helix structure which the picture is showing, this is the structure of a protein and the most common type of secondary structure are the alpha helix and the beta palliate sheet both structures are 
held in shape by hydrogen bonds which form between the carbonyl oxygen of one amino that means C double bond O of one amino acid. Amino acids will have C O O H in that C double bond O H and NH2 group will be there and O from the carbonyl group and amino, amino H group this amino acid or amino H group will be taken from the, the same amino acid. So by that you can have a linkage so that you let alpha helix and beta sheet type of structure. So the secondary structure of the protein exists in the form of primary? No. It exists in alpha helix and a beta sheet or beta pileated sheet. Both B and C is the correct answer because we have seen now alpha helix and beta sheet are the secondary structure of protein which is existing. So we can say that what we have discussed. Number six, amino acids are connected by dash to form protein structure. So what is that dash to form? Amino acid are connected by how it is connected to form a protein structure. Indirectly, we want to ask a question instead of dash. The question can be asked, amino acid are building blocks of protein. How they made the structure? How? How they are making the structure? Very simple. They are making by peptide bond. The carbonyl group and the amine group which are linked together by removal of one, bond, one water molecule CO, NH, amide linkage, peptide, peptide. So their name is peptide, they told. Or CO, NH2 is an amide. Or NH2 is an amine, which you might have studied in your organic chemistry. So it's very clear, it's a peptide bond is the connecting of amino acid to form protein structure. So they gave choice like ester bonding. No, ester bonding you know that R C O O R hydrogen bond, H bond, not only hydrogen bond, no. Peptide bond, just now we have seen with the picture evidence and the knowledge which we have. Next choice is none of the above. The answer is peptide bond. Very simple. Seven, biuret test is used for identification of. So everybody knows biuret test is for proteins. Which test we have, we have used in our lab also. So choice, what they have asked is very important. But biuret test is used for the detection of proteins with tyrosine and tryptophan amino acids in their composition. Phenylalanine does not give a positive result when you are using biuret test. Proteins have these amino acids give yellow color when treated with concentrated nitric acid. So by this which we can understand biuret test is used for identifying protein but specifically it is due to giving the color due to the presence of amino acid. So the choice they have given is amino acid, lipids, carbohydrates and all the above or all of the above. If they have given protein then we might have selected protein first but they have not given protein we should select amino acid. Lipids is not for, biuret test is not for lipids. Biuret test is not for carbohydrate. So we can select amino acids. Number eight, which of the following is a sulfur containing amino acid? So we should know some of the structure of the amino acid in our mind. So we know this is alanine. Only NH2, CH, CH3, COOH. There is no sulfur 
and this is tyrosine benzophenyl group with CH2 NH COOH. This is also not having sulfur group. And when you see alanine, tyrosine, glycine, NH2, CH2, COOH, they are also no, no sulfur. But the lost ties cyst in the structure. SH, C is NH2, COOH. So cysteine is a sulfur containing amino acid. Cysteine and cysteine, they both are sulfur containing amino acid. So this the student should be clearly you have to mention. The sulfur containing amino acid in this four, this one is cysteine. And there will be hydroxyl containing amino acids, methionine, like that they may ask. So you should have an idea about that also. Next, number nine, the question is, Collagen is an example of Collagen is an example They are given a choice like Polypeptide Dipeptide Tripeptide Oligopeptide The answer it is a polypeptide But the student should know what is dipeptide What is tripeptide What is oligopeptide And what is polypeptide Very simple But still we should know some of the details Dipeptide means Two peptide linkage Peptide means what? Uh, CO, NH, two amino acid linkage. So collagen, what is collagen? How we select it is a polypeptide. Collagen peptide are a versatile source of protein and an important element of healthy nutrition. Their nutritional and physiological property promote the health of bone and joints and contribute to beautiful skin. Collagen consists of three polypeptide chains so there itself it's a polypeptide it has many amino acids and many polypeptide chains not only one polypeptide it has three polypeptide chains so the correct answer should be polypeptide is the correct which you have selected what is a dipeptide a dipeptide is a molecule which contains two amino acids joined together by a peptide bond some examples of dipeptide include carnosine, anserin and homoanserin and a tripeptide is a peptide consisting of three amino acids joined by peptide bonds. Simple examples are the tripeptide made by joining either two glycine molecules or two glycine and one alanine molecule and oligopeptide means what? often just called peptide oligo a few a number of 2 to 20 amino acid can include dipeptide tripeptide tetrapeptide pentapeptides like that up to 20 then we can go for polypeptide so polypeptides also can be told even one or two three if it is multiple polypeptide chains having three four five six different polypeptides that also can be told but collagen here in this junction collagen is a polypeptide and number 10 the question arginine is what is arginine arginine you can see it's a basic amino acid there is basic amino acid acidic amino acids so their basicity is more than they are new they have acidity and as well as basification they have a zutrions they have carboxylic group and amino group that everybody knows but still here in this junction we should know arginine contains more nitrogen NH2 group NH, NH and CH2, CH2, CH2 CH, H, CH, NH2 C double bond O, OH that is an arginine is a whether it is a semi-essential amino acid or essential amino acid non-essential amino acid or none of the above. So it is necessary for the students to know what is essential amino acid, what is semi-essential amino acid, non-essential amino acid and none, none of the above they are told. But the answer is semi-essential amino acid. Actually, what is essential amino acid? Essential amino acids are usually needed for our body for various 
structural formation in our body tissues cells everything is made up of proteinous nature which is made up of this amino acids so there are 20 now 21 essential amino acids are there in which there is semi essential amino acid like arginine and histidine they are take some time to produce in our body so they can be supplied through food and like that they can be called as semi essential like some of them like arginine so arginine is a semi essential amino acid it's an, it's comes in an essential amino acid in which one or two only we can call it as semi essential amino acid so this the point you should remember the answer may be given in different form the student should be very clearly they should understand what is essential amino acid what is semi essential amino acid what is non essential amino acid and these things and also which one amino acid is dispensable which is indispensable dispensable means unimportant indispensable means very important so this type of things we can have and discussion in the question another question also they have asked number 11 the formula of biological value b v so biological value is protein is defined as the percentage of absorbed nitrogen absorbed nitrogen retained by the body and it is calculated by biological value is equal to nitrogen retained in our body divided by nitrogen absorbed in our body into 100 so we should know what is a nitrogen retained in our body and what is nitrogen absorbed in our body the amount of nitrogen in the diet eaten and it is excreted in an adult animal or measured excretion means by feces and by urine this will be measured and the percentage of the nitrogen retained by the animal can be calculated listen to me very clearly and even i have explained by the formula also but it will be easy for you to know retained nitrogen divided by absorbed nitrogen in 200 but retained nitrogen how much you have retain retained how will you calculate nitrogen intake what is, we have taken by the food or whatever the compound which you have taken how much nitrogen is already known should be consumed that is taken delta fish fecal nitrogen feces should be analyzed the initial feces before taking the taking the sample consuming the sample and the after consuming the sample that is the delta difference in nitrogen in fecal matter and also subtract difference in the nitrogen present in the urine also shall to be subtracted from the initial intake nitrogen for the animal or the human being divided by n intake that means initial intake minus only the fecal nitrogen into 100 that is absorbed nitrogen why we have not add subtracted the urine nitrogen in the denominator while we telling about absorbed because urine anything have to be excreted means it should come by globular filtration through kidney so it has to undergo absorption after distribution in the blood entering into the kidney then only it can released or excreted in the urine so it is included in the absorbed nitrogen so absorbed nitrogen you cannot subtract the nitrogen present in the urine so the original if you see the bv is equal to n intake minus n output the output means fecal nitrogen plus 
urine nitrogen the whole divided by n intake minus n fecal or n which is present nitrogen which is present in the feces into 100 i hope the student have to listen slowly and understand very clearly so that it will be easy for you to know what is the biological value of a protein how it can be determined by an animal study or by a human study so you see they have given a choice a biological value is equal to nitrogen retained divided by nitrogen absorbed into 100 nitrogen retained divided by nitrogen excreted into 100 nitrogen absorbed by nitrogen excreted into 100 and uh, none of the above the answer is very clear nitrogen retained by nitrogen absorbed into 100 so here in this junction I am just explaining this one simple question to know about what do you mean by nitrogen intake and what do you mean by nitrogen output and what do you mean by retained nitrogen what is the difference between retained nitrogen and what is the difference between absorbed nitrogen so you should know that fecal matter nitrogen and the urine nitrogen having a difference fecal matter nitrogen is directly excreted without absorption but in urine nitrogen they enter into absorption and then it is excreted because the urine will, which, which is excreted only after global, glomerol filtration in the kidney and then all the recollection then it will come out so you should know that calculation number 12 Kwashiorkor that are uh, sorry Kwashiorkor are you can say why K silent also you can pronounce uh, Kwashiorkor has symptoms the Kwashiorkor Kwashiorkor is a type of malnutrition you can see in most of the country in African countries and in, in India also malnutrition for child children characterized by severe protein deficiency so it causes fluid retention and a swelling distended abdomen so you can see the picture the children will have a belly that is called distended abdomen in Koshiwaka in these symptoms whatever which we can see is change in this skin pigment diarrhea failure to gain weight and to grow fatigue lethargy fatigue lethargy will be seen in the patient children hair color changes texture changes an increase or more severe infection due to damage the in immune system irritability this all can be seen as a symptom so they have given a choice weaken immune system it is there lethargy like fatigue it is also will be there diarrhea is also a symptom in question all of the above the answer is all of the above for the 12th question so Koshwaka is in malnutrition the student should know that the picture never forget it will cause all type of symptoms Santo protein test Santo protein test gives dash amino acid gives with dash amino acid what type of amino acid they have given what is what type of color with what what type of with this Santo protein test gives usually they have given absence of amino acids like trip tyrosine tryptophan will not get any color some you will get yellow or orange color can be seen presence of aromatic amino acid like tyrosine tryptophan santo protein test will give yellow color so blue color is not seen red color is not seen yellow color or orange color they can be seen 
they have given a choice yellow color so we can select yellow color and number 14 ninhydrin test is an indication of the presence of ninhydrin is a chemical substance which is used for identifying amino acid ninhydrin test is a chemical test useful for identify ammonia primary secondary amines or amino acid so they are used for identifying ammonia primary secondary amines or even amino acid so the this is the structure of ninhydrin which will react with the amino acid and gives a purple color purple color can be produced by ninhydrin so pep due to peptide linkage no presence of tyrosine is it they are indicating presence of tyrosine or presence of sulfide bond no they are giving color the indication of the test indicates the presence of amino group and carboxylic group or presence of amino acid in a protein you can just or in a mixture of amino acid or in a single amino acid presence of NH2 group can be easily identified by ninhydrin test. So elastin is a protein that acts for. What is elastin? Elastin is in one type of main function is to allow tissues in our body to stretch out or string, string back in the skin and your arteries and tube shaped blood vessels and carry blood from one or uh, carry blood from heart through your body and elastin gives your arteries and st stretchability or stretchy characters and makes easier for your heart to pump blood and they are given whether this elastin is anti-aging skin repairing and it is both it is used for elastin is one of the protein which gives most stretching and the shrinking back of the skin and the tissue so aging anti-aging skin repairing and both it has but none is not the answer so you can say it is used for anti-aging skin repairing due to its functional property of allowing the tissue in our body stretching and you see the, that is it will string a shrinking back these all strings they are made and and you see the 16th question question which of the following is indispensable amino acid it was an interesting question and they can ask many things the students can be understood by that already we have discussed about essential amino acid and semi-essential amino acid. So here it is necessary for you to come to a conclusion. They may ask in twisted questions. So which of the following is indispensable amino acid? The answer we have told that it is essential amino acid, non-essential amino acid, semi-essential amino acid and none of the above. The student should know already essential amino acid means 20, now it is 21. One more they have added. They all of them are in our body. So they are the indispensable means, indispensable means especially very important. Dispensable means not very important. Indispensable means very important. A very important, if we can say in English the word, very important. So what is the essential indispensable amino acid? Why the answer you are telling it is very important? means essential amino acid. Essential amino acid cannot be made by the body. As a result, they must come from food. And nine essential amino acids histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan and vanillin. So they are essential amino acid which has to be supplied by the food. Essential amino acids also known as indispensable amino acid. Why? Are amino acid that humans and other vertebrates cannot synthesize from 
metabolic, intermediate, and a non-essential amino acid. Why? What are non-essential amino acid? Non-essential amino acid, known as dispensable amino acid, which is not very important, can be excluded from a diet. The human body can synthesize this amino acid using only the essential amino acid which already you are getting from the food. There are six non-essential amino acid which are also produced in our body by the supply of the other amino acid which is also produced in our body. They are also can be included in essential amino acid when it is used, when it's needed for us. That is alanine, aspartic acid, asparagine, glutamic acid, serine and that is selenocysteine it is considered as a 21st essential amino acid. So the non-essential amino acid means you should not think that it is not needed. They are also coming inside the essential amino acid. Only the difference is they cannot be supplied from the food or from external means. They can, they have to prepare by our own body. So arginine and histidine, arginine we have asked the question why it is called a semi-essential amino acid because they required some long period of time, period of time, required during, du, du, during period of maximal growth, severe, that is severe stress and injury. Arginine and histidine are semi-indispensable because they are slow to form in humans. So this is the examples which I have added for you. Thank you. Thank you for this small class for biochemistry. We will see the next class. So every time revise this and know, improve your knowledge. And this is not only for the exit exam, even the second year, the subject biochemistry or pharmaceutical chemistry or pharmacology or pharmacognosy, any subject, you can just revise your knowledge by listening to these questions. Thank you.